for everyone. CIP feels incited to connect with you all with this cruise towards an enlightening webinar on network protocols and analysis. This is Zena from Computer Science Department, third year, Channel Institute of Technology. I take this moment to glorify Channel Institute of Technology and our chairman, Shri P. Sriram, for his undeniable support. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. K. Suresh to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Zineth. Uh, good afternoon to one of the here. I am very happy to welcome you all uh, for the invited talk on network protocols and analysis conducted by CAC Department of Chennai Institute of Technology. Today, our guest is Mr. Ramanujam Saundarajan, Regional Technical Manager, APAC, that is uh, Asia Pacific Alcatel Lucent Enterprise, Bangalore. He is currently working as a Regional Technical Manager Alcatel Lucent Enterprise for past 14 years. He managing 37 countries in the Asia Pacific region, including China. He visited the countries and worked in France, Singapore, and the US Los Angeles. He is specialized in network engineering and demonstrated his skills at TFAG Core. So previously, he, he, he was worked in Arul Migu Kalasalingam College of Engineering as an assistant professor in computer science engineering. He also worked as a project engineer in TIFA Core in network engineering. I welcome you on behalf of CAC department and the Chennai Institute of Technology for this expert lecture. Welcome you, sir, and I hand over this session to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the blissful introduction. Sorry for the trouble, friends. We have some network issues. Our guest will join within two minutes. Thank you for the patience. Now our guest of honor has joined. Without further ado, let me pass on to our guest of honor, Mr. Ramanujan Saundarajan. So you can now go ahead. Hello, good evening. Uh, thank you, sir. Evening. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Suresh, sir, and thank you, madam, uh, thank for you. giving an introduction about uh, uh, me. And uh, I think, uh, uh, good afternoon, friends. I know because uh, you are so young, so if I call you as friends, I will also be very young to be part of your team. Okay, uh, uh, and we will start with the discussion on the network protocols and analysis or analysis. Okay. So first. Uh, I know the audience are from the second year and third year of uh, B computer science. So first, I would like to understand 
what you know about networking it can be an uh, i think this uh, webinar should be an interactive webinar just i don't want to spend one hour from my end and just after that i think there is no any uh, result or something so make sure that you are uh, also like uh, if any doubts you can also just uh, raise your hands or you can also ask me then and there there is no any issue i am ready to update you and i am ready to answer you okay we will directly go with the uh discussion on the topics network protocols and analysis first before going to the network protocols i would like to check with you all first of all whether we know about networking what is networking why i need networking you will know that this networking networking okay so okay network networking is uh, just a group of or a collection of data which can be shared by some specific group so that is purely i am going to share some informations and a group of people they will be getting that data or that information and normally that we will call as a networking here we are sharing the data we are sharing the resources so yes when we are sharing the resources how we can formulate or how we can have a procedure what we are going to share and uh, i think uh, how to use that so there is a procedure what we need to share and how we need to share and how this network is going to be uh, used so in this networking there is a uh, approach we will call that as a layered approach so that layered approach normally i think third year students i think you have studied about the osi layered approach so there is a standard open system interconnection where they have given some layered approach so how we can go with that layered approach so this layered approach is something how the data or how the information can be passed from your pc or from your application to the destination application so through the cable from your pc from your cpu how it is going to be out and then how it is going to the internet using the public carriers and how it is reaching the uh, destination end so that is uh, really uh, it's amazing so no one can imagine how these data are um, uh, reaching the destination the very first thing is like as per the approach it's a seven layered approach so now we have reduced it to five layered approach uh, we will first go with the seven layer approach the very first layer is that physical layer yes we we can see the cables which are attached to my uh, pc so the physical layer the second layer is the data link layer so it's going to link my physical layer with the next layer with my network so that is the data link layer it's going to have a link between my network and my physical device so data link layer then the network layer so in the network layer yes how my data are going to be addressed how my data are going to be represented and how it's going to transport so in the network layer it will just giving an addressing how uh, how my uh, data will be identified so some type of addressing mechanism will be used in this network layer and moving to the next layer it's going to be the transport layer so how my data will be transported from one end to the other end okay so that is a transport layer in what type of protocols it will be using how it is going to be transported okay so after transportation so what is that so i need to check what is the content of my uh, data and how it is going to represent so it is a session layer and network layer uh, and the application layer so what type of application i want to use i have to get the data only to the specific application 
I should it should not give to some other information. If it's a HTTP, always I have to use a browser to view that HTTP information. If it is a SNMP, I need to get through the network monitoring system, like we will call that as an NMS. So SNMP. So all the communications will be through the SNMP and SMTP, simple mail transfer. Also, some specific application like Outlook or some other mail exchange server will be used to view that uh, application. I think to view uh, to use that protocol to get the proper information, DNS. Domain name system. So, with the name, I don't. The addressing system can also be represented with the different names. So, I can use the DNS. So, these are some of the applications where the where it's used and then how it is transported from N to N. So, everyone knows that physical layer, data link layer, application layer. Uh, sorry, a data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, and uh, application layer. Okay, so how my data will be transferred? So how can I check that? So today, each session is going to be like, these are the protocols which are used to transport that information from one end to the other end, from the source to the destination. And how to check that? What is there in the data? How can I see that? I cannot imagine what will be the content of my data. So how I make sure that my data, whatever the information I have given is transmitted to the destination. So that is normally we will be using some tools to do the analysis. Okay. So uh, those tools, we will be seeing this uh, tools. Uh, okay, so uh, with those tools, we can able to see what type of data and what it can be, uh, where it can be used. So first, we will just go with one by one physical layer. So in the physical layer, what are all the devices involved? So have anyone seen the network interface card? Have anyone? Can anyone give me an answer, yes or no? It uh, seems to be very silent. You know uh, why I'm asking some questions? Because it's 2 p.m. I know that everyone had lunch, and then you guys will be uh, feeling sleepy. If I just take the uh, take continuously the class, then I think it will be like, it will be like you will be feeling sleepy and really you will uh, get sleep. So just I need some interaction. Okay, I got one uh, answer from uh, Gilly, Chakradar. Okay, Chakradar Gilly. It's no. Okay, in your laptop or in your personal computer, so you will be having one pole or a wire will be connecting to one port. We will call that port as a network interface port. It is like a small motherboard. We will call that as a daughter board, which will be inserted in one of the slot in the motherboard. And that that main purpose of this daughter board is to transmit data and get the data and just connecting it to your PC. So it is a it's an interface between your system and your network. Network, so it is called as a network interface card. We will call that as a NIC card. Okay, sir, I'm having a NIC card. I'm having a cable connected to my NIC card. So how to check is this my NIC card? How I'm going to get the data? So every NIC card will be having specific IP address. Sorry, specific address. So that address is called as a MAC address. It's a uh, six octets of address will be there. Okay, so forty-eight bits, okay, six octets of address will be there. So it is it that MAC address will be a unique MAC address. So the network interface card, which is manufactured, okay, every network interface card will be having a unique MAC address. This MAC address will be 
having two parts one is the oui like a company name company will be having one specific id the first three bytes are company uh, representing the company from where i got this nick card like it is a sorry yeah nick card it is from intel or from some other vendor so i'll be having the oui information the first thing the last three bytes will be the informations i think specific to that nick card so the nick card will be nick card address will be unique okay so that is a network interface card where you will be connecting the cable to that even there will be another question sir i am going to use wireless so you are only talking about wired network so what about wireless yes even wireless in your laptop or in your pc you will be having a wireless nick card you can always always see that in your laptop there will be a wireless nick card so that will also do the same functionality but without wire that's all very simple that will also have a unique mac address so without mac address no nick card will be used okay so this is a uh, we'll call that address as the mac address and the name of the card will be nic card nick card network interface card even if it's wired or if it is wireless it is a nick card okay so that's good so it is a nick card i know so cable is connected my nick card is there okay so where this mac address will be counted in this layer you give me some layered approach physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer <clears throat> and uh, all these layers how where it is uh, it will be there so it is always representing the data link layer as i told you it's a linking layer between the network layer and my physical layer so between the cable or my desktop or my laptop to the network so the data link layer will be handling this type of mac addresses so any network any packet or any information coming from the physical layer or coming from your physical device it will go at the end it will go to the data link layer it will check for the mac address okay this is my source so this is my source mac address it will update that information with my source mac address and then that information will be sent to the destination so that there is a process we will get the mac address of the destination and then it will update that mac address in that information and it will be sent so this mac address will be dealt or will be working in the data link layer for that mac address to work or for that data link layer the device which we will be using is a network interface card it's a nic card which is available in your laptop or in your pc okay sir that is good coming back to the next layer it's a network layer yes sir there is a network layer you told there is a addressing mechanism yes we will call that as a ip addressing what is that ip addressing so for the internet means like network i am i can directly go with the network so for using the network services there is an addressing mechanism and there are some rules and regulations to use that so what are the rules and regulations so who will be managing that or who knows the rules and regulations so a protocol is nothing but just specific rules and some regulations will be followed so it is called as an internet protocol in the network layer the protocol is going to be the internet protocol so to send some data in the internet or to send some data in the network we will be using this layer it's a network layer inter protocol will be used and what is the addressing mechanism it is a four octet okay so 32 bit information will be there 4 into 8 32 bit information or four bytes of information will be there first byte dot second byte dot third byte dot fourth very simple four bytes so 1.2.3.4 dot 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 this is one address very simple so this is 
this address will be used only to transport the data in the internet or only to address the information in the network not in your pc not in your physical device more physical devices will be mostly using your not mostly will be using your mac address and then it will be transported to your to the destination okay i got the mac address first in the data link layer then on top of that i got my ip address which is a, a four byte information so x dot x dot x dot x that is my internet protocol address for any data to be transmitted mac will be there that is my source ip will be there that is my source ip okay now i'm going to send this data in the network so how it will be carried out who is going to carry this data yes there are two protocols we will call that as a tcp or we will call that as a uh, i think second protocol is a ud so what is tcp transmission control protocol so it will be having some rules and regulations to control the transmission of the packets okay so that is transmission control protocol tcp okay very good what is udp user datagram protocol so what is the purpose of user datagram protocol because it is not going to do any control over the transport uh, control over the internet because it's a datagram protocol and it's a user based protocol yes so this udp packets or udp will take care of the data it will just transport it just transport it in between if the data is lost it's lost you cannot track the data when it is transported through udp but in tcp you can track the data with when it is transported using tcp so we will call that tcp communication as a reliable communication what is reliable communication any data i am transmitting from the source to the destination that data will be reliable one sir reliable really even i am not able to get that reliable yes the data will be transmitted from the source and my tcp layer will take care of the communication to the destination and once the data received at the destination this will send an this will send an information to the source saying that yes your data is delivered to the destination so we are calling that protocol as a reliable protocol so tcp always it is a reliable protocol udp is a unreliable protocol means that it is a carrier it will take my data but in the network due to congestion okay congestion means don't think in words are very simple the technical words are very simple with the name itself you can easily understand congestion is nothing but a jam in the network so at the same time if hundreds thousands 10000 lakhs of people are using the net if the line is very the bandwidth of the line is very low then there will be a congestion it will be a bottleneck so no data will be passed like a road traffic jam if there is a road work going on in chennai and if there is a blockage so instead of uh, if the road is like uh, 60 feet or uh, 80 feet road four four cars can go at the same time but if there is a road work for 60 feet only 20 feet will be remaining so only one car can go so i'll be getting four cars till that point but in that point only one can uh, one car can transport from that place to the next place okay till the work place so there will be a congestion it's like we will call that as a road traffic jam but it is a congestion okay so and congestion even in the network we will be having congestion at the time of congestion this user datagram protocol it there is a timer for each and every protocol how long it can carry this information so that 
information after the uh, value comes to zero that information will be dropped the source won't be knowing any information or source won't be uh, uh, getting any uh, acknowledgments with that uh, udp but tcp yes it will we will be getting an acknowledgment from the destination yes i have got your response i have got your sorry i have got your data so this is the response acknowledgement so for normally in uh, tenenbaum or any william stallings books and all you will be getting some uh, real time example like a registered post and the postcard i know guys you you haven't experienced that inland letters or postcards even you have not even seen that postcards now it's not even in india okay now you are like a uh, uh, 21st uh, 21st century kids like uh, you won't be knowing postcard now even register post is also very less now it's like a courier we are we are most used to that couriers so courier you are getting a bill you can track you know that yeah this is this shipment has been arrived this place on this date if you want you can get the message so that is purely tcp okay so tcp and udp then coming back to the presentation layer session layer and uh, application layer uh, okay session layer presentation layer and application layer normally i have not uh, specifically mentioned the presentation layer i have included that in the application layer session layer okay sir i am having a protocol which is a reliable protocol tcp okay it is going to send the data okay how it is going to send the data in one laptop or my pc i am having one browser and in that browser i am having many tabs in one tab i am going to use yahoo mail or gmail first tab i am just uh, checking my gmail in the second tab i am checking just an information what is the traffic in that area third third tab i am just checking about cit okay the profile of cit what is the place my and how many students are studying just the cit website i am using if i am sending a request from each and every tab how i am getting the correct information to the specific tab because my pc is going to have one mac address it's unique you know that the nick card will be having one mac address and my i uh, system will be having one ip address how to interact with the network in network internet so one ip address one mac address will be there so i will be using so many windows so how i am getting the relevant information on the specific window so that will be maintained by my session layer so every information will be knowing that this is my session session 1 session 2 session 3 like that session will be maintained so that is a session layer then coming to the presentation layer the presentation what is the presentation whether the data is specifically or data is correct as per the instructions given in the protocol so for example if i just mark as http colon slash slash www dot google dot co dot in this is my url in this as per the application layer i'll be using http as a protocol and uh, www dot x x x x x dot co dot in it should be there if i am not following the proper information instead of http i am typing as http i missed one t then i have given colon instead of double slash i just missed one slash instead of triple i think i have given www worldwide servers web dot instead of google g o o g l e i missed one o g o g l e okay and instead of code at in i just give dot co so if there is no website like www.gogle.co it will give an error message 
and if the protocol is not properly specified that will also give an error message so that informations or that um, syntax and semantics will be taken care by my presentation layer so nowadays there is no need of sending uh, updating http just if you type google dot in it will take http dot colon 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 slash slash www dot google dot co dot in or even if it is simply google we will be getting what are all the google dot com google dot co dot in google dot ca like that we will be getting all the options so this presentation layer now combined with application layer because without application is uh, we cannot check the presentation so these two are combined presentation presentation layer application layer and even the session layer is also combined because we know that the session is particular to specific to the protocol or the application which i am using so that is also combined so the uh, presentation layer session layer and application layer presentation layer and session layer combined and call that as a single layer as an application layer itself then coming to the next layer transport layer then network layer and this data link and physical layer so as a uh, new approach under tcp ip stack uh, for the reliable communication we will be having five layered approach one is physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer and application layer so that is called as a tcp ip stack you know what is tcp transport protocol ip internet protocol so only with this we are transmitting the data okay so simple i think i uh, I'm, i'm also trying to uh, share some presentation i will see how what how it is possible to uh, share the presentation with you guys okay so this uh, tcp ip stack is a new layered approach with five layers okay sir so you have discussed everything from the from one end how the data are transmitted okay now i am just typing http colon slash slash www dot google dot co dot in okay i typed in my browser application is there that is http application my presentation it will check yes your uh, url is correct then session it will make the session as session 1 then the session id will be 1 the first Uh, tab in the browser okay session id one okay it will send to the uh, send to the transport layer okay what type of protocol i have to choose okay so it's a i want to use tcp i want to use a reliable communication okay tcp okay done next what is the uh, okay i'm having a small bit of data that is um, what encapsulated we will call that as an encapsulation so a small information it will be bundled with the tcp so tcp ip which is our tcp protocol will be bundling that so it's like a wrapping with the tcp protocol then on top of that it's a network layer so ip i have to wrap with my ip so ip it's a, it will be having x dot x dot x dot x so 1 dot 2 dot 3 dot 4 or for a google just to check google if you are having laptops or system in front of you just you can now type uh, www.8.8.8.8 dot 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 in google i think to check so it will be it's a google server so you can try to check that also okay that's a, a dns so it, you can get some informations in google okay 8.8.8 dot dot so that's an ip address so that will be wrapped on top of the tcp a tcp transport protocol so now network is also done after that your mac address your pc's mac address should be wrapped so how can i get my pc's mac address so go to your start go to your command prompt and in your command prompt you can search for ip config so if you search for ip config you will be getting the mac address you will be getting your ip address everything will be there 
so ethernet adapter la local area network so what is that ethernet adapter that is your nic card so ethernet adapter information will be there and then you can have that uh, okay normally ip config slash all will give you the mac address ip config will give you only the ip information ip config slash all will give you the mac address information ethernet adapter local area connection so it will be like uh, six bytes of information so it will be like uh, alphanumeric uh, for example i am giving you my uh, card description it's saying as uh, intel ethernet connection something i 208 hyphen lm f8 hyphen ca b8 5a f62e so like that we will i'll be getting that information it's marked as physical address so that is a mac address so that will be wrapping on top of that and that information will be sent through the cable how it will be sent everyone knows that it's going to be binary so it will be ones and zeros so that will be sent to the sent through the cable okay sir so it has been sent how can i get to the next pc okay so where it will be sent it will be sent from your pc to the router there is one device called as router which will be working which will be uh, finding the route to send this data in the network so this device will be operating in the network layer yes sir it will find a route how it will find a route so what information it should have okay so normally whenever you are sending any information there should be a uh, i think destination address so you know the destination address so you have to check you will be sending the destination address in your packet or the information so i don't know the mac address but this is the destination ip address where i need to send it okay i am sending it to the destination address here the problem i know the without without knowing the destination you cannot send any data correct maybe i am sending it to my friend who is having an ip of 8.8.8.4 i am sending the information from 8.8.8.8 okay i know the ip but i don't know the mac address so how to find the mac address of the destination so there is a protocol called arp it is a address resolution protocol so what this arp will do it will convert it will find the relevant mac address binded to this ip address who will be having this information so normally whenever you are connected to the network your information will be stored in your devices network devices we will call that as a bridges or switches or routers so router means it will do a bridging it will do switching as well as it will do routing also okay what is switching what is a bridging so where you want the bridge to connect two banks of the river normally that is a normally we will call that as a bridge to connect two banks of the river so instead of banks we will call that as this is my source and that is my destination in between river is going to be my network very simple so a device which is used to connect my source to the destination it's a bridge what is a switch yes if more than if more number of banks are there or more number of destinations are there then i will be going with my new network device called a switch so which will be switching all my or forwarding all my data to the destination how it is going to forward so this bridges and switches will be using my mac address to transfer the data from the source to the destination so bridges and switches are the devices which will be working in data link layer because it is a layer 2 so these devices are called as layer 2 devices so what is the layer 2 addressing scheme addressing mechanism it is mac addressing mechanism okay so these
bridges and switches will be holding the back address table okay so how it will be holding normally if a bridge or a switch will be having ports where we will be connecting the direct pc or the end device to that switch or the bridge it will be like port uh, 8 port 2 port till 48 ports we are having switches like that 2 port switch 6 port switch 8 port switch 10 port switch 12 port switch 24 port switch 48 port switch okay so 2 port is one source one destination only two connections will be there 10 switches so one source 10 destination or one input i i'll be having 10 outputs i can have 10 port uh, nowadays it's a 12 port switch 24 port switch or uh, 48 port switch okay so if any device connected to port number 1 there will be a table inside the uh, there will be a database inside the switch or the bridge marked as port number 1 this is the mac address of this device it is available very simple just port number mac address it's a mac address. so this will be having this so bridge switches bridges will be having a mac address table okay even the ip address is also configured for that adapters so this ip information will also be available in the mac address table or bridging table so this is the mac address this is my ip address and this is connected to the port number 1 so port number 2 second mac address second same ip a second ip like that port number 3 ah, it's, it won't be a same ip it will be a, a, a different ip if it is the same ip then the my network will totally uh, get confused and then it will there will be a chaos in the network okay that we will see how or what we can do then the third port that mac address that ip address so like that the devices will be maintaining the table so whenever it is sent to the router the next will be the router which will be working for as a network device so the router will find the route so for this type of network there is a switch switch is having a mac table and switch will give me if i sent an information a hey, i'm having this ip address i want to know the mac address just a very simple query from the router so the switch will be having the mac address and the ip address in a table so it will send that yes i'm having i'm i'm having this uh mac address and this is the ip address uh, sorry for this ip address this is the mac address and then it will send that information to the destination or the router and the router will know will be having this database and router will send will know which route i have to take to reach this destination and it will send it so that table or the database in the router we will call that as an arp table a r p address resolution protocol so this is an arp table so with this it can be transported from one end to the another end and how the data will be transported so we will call i told you simple http wrapping on uh, with the transport layer protocol on top of that wrapping with the ip layer protocol then on top of that with the data link layer protocol and then it will be converted into ones and zeros sent so normally this wrapping process is called as a encryption okay this wrapping process is called as an encryption very simple in a real time example i want to send my mouse okay from chennai to some other place or to chengalpet chennai to chengalpet i am going to the korea i cannot just give the mouse to them what i will do i will get a cover and i will put my mouse in the cover my mouse is my application layer protocol i am putting that in the cover in the the cover is a transport layer protocol means like the cover is a trans because if the cover tears off your mouse will get dropped no one knows where it get dropped okay so that is reliable and unreliable communication one is a reliable is tcp very good cover threaded cover so i am putting that mouse in my threaded cover that's a transport layer on top of the cover i am writing the address some address on top of the cover so that is network layer protocol ip address i am writing okay 
and even even though if i am having that address on top of that cover sometime they will be asking what is a pin code or what is a district i cannot just give a name street name and area they will ask sir what is the pin code so that pin code is like your mac address okay so on top of the uh, uh, cover itself i will be having the address with my pin code as well as my phone number so those two considered as a mac address on top of wrapping and it will be sent through the courier okay courier is sent now this process is called as an encapsulation process in networking whenever anyone getting this parcel when are anyone getting this parcel so uh, the, that information that uh, destination will remove the parcel means like first he will check ah, this is addressed to me okay this is that sender's phone number everything is there okay this is addressed to me okay that's accepted then what he will do he will tear the cover okay cover is cleared off i'll be getting the data means like my mouse okay so the, that process at the destination is called as a decryption process so encryption and decryption so any doubts till this point i would like to uh, give opportunity for you guys to ask me the questions any doubts on this this is very basic this is very basic so friends if you have any doubt any queries you can post it in the chat box now our guest will join with join with us within few minutes yes this is very basic i can anyone i think if any doubts yeah please let me know no doubts so is it clear for everyone even i need the acknowledgement if it is clear <laughs> if it is not clear just uh, send me your acknowledgements yes it's clear or it's not clear okay i hope that is clear to everyone okay so now we will see something about the analysis so whether everyone are having a pc or they are having some uh, laptop laptop in front of you can i have some answers okay very good so chakradhar gelli has answered okay before that yeah i got some messages uh, what is the role of a modem in the network layer and the difference so first what is a modem okay so you uh, uh, maybe if you are an it student you may be knowing or it or electronic student you may be knowing about the modulation and demodulation modem is doing that just increasing the signal and like it's giving the signal to that so modem so whatever you are calling that as a modem modem is like a switch as well as the router i'm getting a telephone line i'm getting a data line to my modem and it will be modulation it will be doing the uh, signal analysis doing the modulation and then sending it to the my sending it to my service provider so service provider will be having the router so from the router or it's, it will be a server all your requests will be going only to a service provider so you cannot directly communicate anything so all your data can be monitored by your service provider so it will be routed to your service provider from your service provider it will be routed to the 
network and from there it will be routing to routed to the destination i think this is a question from kritika so uh, do you and i think uh, you got the information correctly modem and the router so router is just a direct but modem is a combination of all these devices it will route your data to your isp and your isp will route it to the network router from that it will be sending it to the destination maybe it will send to the next isp if i am using yatel if somebody is using jio so from yatel it will be sent to the network router which is available in the internet and then it will be sent to the jio service provider from jio service provider it will be sent to the specific modem because i am having the address i am having the proper mac address modem will also having this information because you will be allocated with some specific ip address so for you there will be a specific ip address you can also just go into your pc you can check that ip config in your pc you will be getting only that even if you connect five or six devices you will be getting the sequence of ip addresses in that so normally there is a concept called as dhcp there is if you uh, type the command in your pc you will be having like uh, uh, dhcp servers there is a dhcp server so dhcp what is dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol so nowadays there is no static address your pc now if it is not connected to the network it won't be having any ip address all the media devices will be disconnected you can see that if it is not connected to the network at that time you won't be getting ip address you can just type the command ip config in your command prompt you won't be getting any anything in your pc so when you connected to the network every time the user has to configure the ip address since we are the end users and we don't want to configure ip addresses so what our service providers are doing they have configured some uh, hundreds or thousands or 10000s of ip addresses in their servers whenever you are connected to the server or connected to your isp it will check for the pool means like dot uh, 1 like 192.168.1.1 1 is the starting address and 192.168.1.100 Uh, for example we can take that 100 ip addresses are stored in the server the first guy who is connecting or the first user who is connecting to that server or connecting to your isp he will be receiving one ip address 192.168.1.1 so he will be using 1.1 for that specific session okay second user 192.168.1.2 for that specific session till he disconnects he will be getting only that ip address even if he connects five or six this is for your modem okay so if you are getting connection through your modem your modem will be receiving this ip address from your modem if you are connecting five or six devices wireless or wired whatever the thing everything will be with that ip address, like 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 like that they will be receiving the ip addresses second user means from the same modem or from a different place so the, those will be getting the ip addresses so that is called as dynamically allocation of ip address the rules or the protocols for the dynamically allocation of ip address is called as a dhcp so dynamic host configuration protocol okay okay so i think it's clear and i got some uh, acknowledgments from two or three uh, guys okay done now we will move ahead with the analysis so why i need to analyze and what i am going to analyze so to do the analysis i need to check okay. just be on call i am just trying from my pc whether i can share my pc here uh, like connecting us as uh, connecting to the second line so yeah. 
ओके स्क्रीन शेर नौ So everyone can see my screen, correct? Yes, sir. We could see. You can go okay. ahead. Okay. Very good. So here, what are the types of protocol analysis? So the type of protocol, uh, I think, what is the purpose of analyzing the network? I told you two types of uh, uh, like uh, two. Uh, two types of communication or transport okay i'm just going for a reliable and unreliable with tcp as well as udp and it is transported tcp will give me an acknowledgement udp won't be giving an acknowledgement okay that's done so here what whether the information which i have sent is correctly sent or not or what type of information is sent there are so many protocols for to do the analysis or i can call that as a tools there are so many tools uh, uh, which will analyze my network okay so those are like wireshark uh, yeah, wireshark colasoft and uh, solar winds prtg so this wireshark is nothing just it will it, it's it will sniff all the packets i don't disturb the packet it will get all the copy of the packets and we can see that anyway i have shared my screen i am going to so that so you will be seeing what is going on in this so i'm just going to start my wire shop it is one of the analyzer so what it is going to analyze yes we will see now i told you the layered approach i told you i gave you some information about the each and every layer and addressing so we will see what my analyzer is going to do. okay very good. so this is the template this is the this is my analyzer okay so what i have to do just i have to start a new capture I will just go to my file and I will start. So, which network card I have to use? So, I am going to use wireless network connection because I can. You, you guys can see it is having some IP address one nine two one sixty eight one dot one. Yes, I am using wireless connection. Okay. so this i am going to select so now whenever i have selected you can see the packets going through my wireless nic card okay it's just capturing that there is no disturbance but it's collecting all these data from my net wireless network interface card so normally this type of data collection okay is called as a promiscuous mode so without disturbing the network i will be getting all this Uh, data so i am stopping my packet capture okay so you can see the sequence number okay like starting it will be started from one you can see that so 1 2 3 how many packets has been captured what time i start started with zero and the next 2 2 3 so seconds nanoseconds okay and from which what is the source source of my i think so so this 1.11 so i have to confirm the source so i'm just going to my uh, laptop and then i'm just giving my what is so my laptop wireless interface adapter is showing that ip address is 1.11 and my gateway is 1.1 so means that my service provider modem or my my service provider server is 1.1 so they have allocated me some numbers i think some ip address so that is 1.11 as so you can 
see this this is on dot lab i have highlighted so with the, you can see that the source is 192.168.1.11 okay i don't know the destination it is something destination is ec some information is there we'll see what where it is going see it is going to amazon server you can see that some information ap hyphen south hyphen one dot compute dot amazon aws dot com okay this is my destination and the protocol which is used as udp what is the length of my data 296 bytes what is the information what is the information so it is giving this is the information which is available in my packet okay so this is something padding and what is the length is 250 okay we will see here okay instead of going to this first i will show you very simple example so that you can see I told you eight dot eight eight dot eight dot eight. Okay, I want to have a continuous thing so that I can capture some packets. Okay. I will see me. Okay. Okay, I'll stop and I will filter with I C. I want to get only the ICMP packets. So this is you can see that till it's going on reply from something. So I'll just stop it. You can see here 26 packets sent, 26 packets has received. There is no loss. Okay. So ping is a protocol. It is just a troubleshooting protocol, basic troubleshooting protocol. We can check whether the destination IP is pingable or it's reachable. So ping is packet internet gopher. That is the expansion of this ping protocol. What it will do? It will check for the destination whether it is alive or not. So ping eight. I have given one IP address. Even I think one dot two dot three dot four won't be available. So you can see the ping one dot two dot three dot four. It's not an IP address. So what it is doing? It's trying to ping. By default, it will try to check. Okay, requested timeout. Requested timeout, like four times, it will try to check and then it will give a message. Yeah, yeah these many packets sent, these many packets received. What is the percentage of loss? You can see that four packets sent, received zero, 100% is loss. Okay, so here it gave a requested time, but when there, it was pinging this 8.8.8. .8 .8, at that time, you can see there was a response from 8.8.8. Okay, reply from this the byte is 32 bytes of data I have sent. What is the time? 11 milliseconds it took to get this, and what is the uh, time? TTL. TTL is time to live. So, time to live is 15. As I told you, in the network, when transporting the data, this field will be having the uh, timer. So when the TTL is coming to zero, that packet will be getting dropped. If it's UDP or a TCP, TTL will be reduced by one. Every second it will be reduced. So you're, you're getting response for every second, okay? So it will be reduced by one, so that when the time to live TTL value comes to zero, that packet will get dropped, okay? So now TTL is 115. There is no any issues. I'm getting proper response. Okay, how long it took? It's the time is 11 milliseconds it took to get the first response. Second response, 6 milliseconds. Third response, 10 milliseconds. Okay. Okay. Good. I have captured this in the wire shot. Okay. So what I'm going to do the analysis. You can see the first packet number 43. Sometime it has given so from my source, it is the destination is my DNS Google. I told you it's 8.8.8.8 is a Google IP. Google IP. So DNS Google. DNS is domain name server. It will change the okay. Okay. 
So DNS Google, so source from my source, it is going to the destination and the protocol used is ICMP. Yes, ICMP protocol is used, okay? Internet control messaging protocol. In the internet, control messages will be sent. What is the control message? I want to check, yeah, you are live or not. I'm just sending a control message. ICMP, internet control message protocol, okay? Then bytes. And we will call that is an echo response and echo reply. The first packet is a echo request. Okay, what it is requesting? Yes. Are you there in the network or not? It is a request. For that, you can see the 51th packet from DNS Google to my PC to my laptop. There is a resp reply. So it is a echo reply. You can see here echo reply. The second packet and TTL. You have seen that initially it was 128 and when I'm getting a reply, it is 115. So reply in 51 seconds. You have seen that. Reply in 51 seconds. So like that every request, there will be a reply. So one request will be from 1.11 to DNS Google and the reply will be DNS Google to 1.11. Okay, so I think this will be clear. So uh, it, it's, it's not a magic. So everyone, you can be an expert in networking in another one week. Okay, it's, it's not a big magic. Install Wireshark, try to capture, okay? Try to analyze the packets. You will know what is going on in the network. So now we will see the packet level information. Okay, first frame. I don't know really, I don't want to explain this, but still I want to show you what is there in that. Why they are calling that as a frame? 74 bit wired, 74 bit captured, or something information is there. Some ID is there. Really, I don't know what is that. Encapsulation type. Yes, as I told you, the informations are encapsulated. You know that. So uh, we will go with the frame number 43. That is a request from 1.11 to Google. So it is an encapsulation. Yes, Ethernet encapsulation. What is the arrival time? Date March 27th, 1511. What is the second Indian Standard Time? Okay, very good. Time, so don't worry. Epoch time. So I don't want you to concentrate on all these things. So what is the frame number? It is 43. What is the frame length? It is 74 bytes. Capture length, it's also 74 bytes. So this frame is giving me very simple information. What's the frame number? Or what type of packet is this? And what type of protocol is used? So it's giving Ethernet protocol, Ethernet type, encapsulation, IP is also used, ICMP, and there is a data. There are these other protocols in the frame. Okay. Then coming to the Ethernet layer or Ethernet protocol, which is a data link layer. What type of address will be used that in data link layer? It will be a six bytes address. So we will call that as a MAC address. Okay. So the MAC address of my PC should be 30.f7.72.29.63.dd. So some information about the uh, uh, company or the vendor information. So shall we double check whether it is correct? 30.f7.72.29.63.dd. 70, yes, we have to check. So go to your command prompt. Type IP config on, you will be getting your MAC address slash on. Okay, so what is that? Uh, okay, 30.7. Where is that? 30.7. I'm not getting my yes, I got it. So, this is my MAC physical address. You can compare these two. That here, okay, you can see I highlighted in the command prompt and then the wires are 30. Uh, I have 7, 72, 29, 63, DD. So it is taking my MAC address. So what is the destination? It is Google. So I don't want to worry. I know the MAC address because there's a protocol. It's an R protocol, which will be giving me that destination information. So this is the destination. This is the source. Okay. What type of IP I'm going to use? IP version 4. Okay, there is IP version 6 and this is not the correct time for you guys to under to know about IPv6. First, try to understand about IPv4. Okay, 
and one more thing whenever i'm just taking my um, ethernet protocol information you can see that in the data part just something is coming into blue it is showing that see here the destination is 30 f7 2963 dd that is available here see you can see it's changed okay only this information will be transmitted that's it. we are getting that okay destination source then coming to the internet protocol it's a network layer i told you network layer will be having only ip addresses okay what is ip address 192.168.1.11 is my ip address what is the destination 8.8.8.8 so you can see this in this and what is the version it is a version 4 because i i'm using ip version 4 okay what is the header length 20 bytes header length go to your uh, uh, take your tanenbaum book or william challenge book open the book check what is the header of ipv4 which is 20 bytes header so what are all the informations in that header everything will be listed here now dfsc dscp so what is the priority for this packet so that is the thing what is the length of this packet what is the identification field and what are all the flags okay whether is out bit fragment more fragment fragment offset you know what is fragment there is a limit for every data to send into the network if you are sending a very large amount of data it will be sent in part by part we will call that as a fragment okay very simple example when you are getting a video maybe if your uh, bandwidth is low or if your modem is slow or if your network line is very slow you will be seeing some frames frame by frame you can see that in a one video itself you can see so many frames and some part it will be black out some will be dull and some will be very clear because of this the data is fragmented and it is sent in the network so whether you want to fragment it or not or how many fragments are there and what is the last fragment so all these informations will be that in this flag time to live you can see that time to live is 128 so when i sending a request my time to live is updated as 128 seconds so for every second it will be reducing the uh, ttl value so i got a response only by 1115 51 51 51 okay so what is a protocol i am using icmp let us check some whether the correct header is received yes because here it's unverified i don't want to do that and what is the source ip what is the destination ip everything is there in this internet protocol and this is a message or you can directly go with this application layer type 8 there are so many types of ping like ping 0 i think type 0 type 8 and all these things so type 8 is a copying request what type co type of that packet icmp packet in this type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 or that type 8 is echo request type 0 is echo reply so code whether the checksum and all these things what is the sequence number response for response is seen in frame number 51 you can see that yes for the 43 packet i am getting a response in frame number 51 and what is the data set what is the data inside i have not sent any data okay but to complete the packet i need a size of that packet so we will call this as a padding even some junk information will be available in that padding so you can see here in the below part abcd to is uh, abcd was sent as a junk information abcd fjh ijk lmnop uh, like till w and then it's abcd it's still junk data i don't need that but still it is sending that because i need to have the complete packet okay this is the very best or the best analyzer to check the packets so very simple example i have given ping request and you i told you it's ping request is uh, echo request is type a if, if you want to see echo reply is type 0 and you can see that source is dns google destination so only this is the information now we have got the packet information we are doing the analysis of the packet so this is a very best the best analyzer you try on your own at home to do the analysis how the network information is 
moving uh, i think trans transmitted in the network and what information i'm getting okay so for just for example i will uh, try to have one http request okay i will just try to do some okay. before that i have to start start and start and i will filter only http http okay i filter only http now there is no http traffic from my pc now i am going to do that http colon slash slash google dot co dot in very simple so i got some response google dot co dot in some response okay you can see some packets okay why i am just showing this is just for tcp connections okay okay what is that packet http there is a packet okay this is just leave it because i am having on firewall in my pc it's a z scaler so oh, like uh, uh, that is giving me some information okay now we will go with this okay uh, i am sending one response tcp packet is taking care of that but inside the tcp packet i am sending https and there are so many things sequence number acknowledgement windows length so have anyone cared about that handshake of the tcp tcp i told you it's a reliable protocol for every request there will be an acknowledgement tcp this is push and acknowledgement and this is only acknowledgement so it is i got the acknowledgement for 76 sorry 66 this is a sequence number of 66 and acknowledgement for 772 so 772 there is uh, two acknowledgements where and there will be a sequence number of 772 there is two yeah sequence number 772 so my acknowledgement it won't give say i should get an acknowledgement for 587 but i have not got the acknowledgement for 587 i am just getting an acknowledgement of 66 it means that i am acknowledging your packet and send me the next information that is the thing so my sequence number is next will be 66 and i am sending the information i am acknowledging 772 so means you please send me the packet 772 next packet so the next sequence number will be marked as 772 and some acknowledgements are random 773017 so there will be a next packet with the sequence number 3017 then 954 as acknowledgement you will be getting 954 as a sequence number for the next packet so only with this even though if it is random only with this we can able to get i think my uh, the data transmission is continuously happening and windowing so in tcp there is a three way handshake first before sending any data since it is a reliable protocol it will have a proper handshake between the destination what is your capacity how much packets you can accept and then they both will come into conclusion the source and the destination and then the data transmission will be happening from the source to the destination so we'll call that as a three way handshake you can google it you can try to get some more inputs about what is the window in size as per the window information this will be also reducing the window information and then it will be sending the data okay i I think this is one of the um, this one very uh, important or uh, I think very good wire shark uh, very good uh, analysis analyzer. So you can always use this analyzer. I have given only the basic information about this analyzer. There are so many things to explore. Okay, uh, always you can just select it and do all sort of things. So if you when well, those with this analyzer then you can be a very good ethical hacker also okay so hacker is not a, a bad thing hacking is also a good thing but you have to use it for very good okay good purpose so hacking is one of the very good domain ethical hacking so we can also uh, do that if you understand this packet captures and then we can get to know what type of packet what will be sequence number how windowing is working and what are all the protocols used so here uh, in ping only we had a frame 
ethernet ip data it IP, icmp and data here you can see frame ethernet so layer 2 uh, internet protocol layer 3 transmission control protocol layer 4 and the directly application layer http and this is the padding okay http what are the informations proxy connect and what is the port number it's using so you guys know about the port number so it's using 443 it's using some random port numbers so there are logical port numbers for every specific application you will be having a port number so here https is having 443 specific http will be having port number 80 so like that there are logical port numbers 65535 logical ports are there and 1024 ports are user defined ports other than this random ports will be used for communication okay simple this is an analyzer so you can do the analysis on your own this is wireshark so you can always search for wireshark select your uh, nick and then you will be getting get to know how it is capturing the packet so i just closed it if you want just I, for your information i'm just trying to open the wireshark which will help what type of uh, okay there is a wireshark okay wireshark is there so i'll open wireshark okay so then opening the wireshark installation is just it's a freeware you can directly download it from internet wireshark w a r e s h a r k so you can see this welcome to wireshark okay you have to select the proper network interface card here i'm having only one wireless connection so how i have selected what i will know okay fine there is no usb there is no local area connection no wired connection some loopback traffic adapter there is a graph going on and there is ndas van adapters are there lan adapter no nothing but in another one wireless adapter there is some graph is going on so i selected this because i know this, there is an adapter where the data is transmitted so just i have selected and now i can able to get this capture So many things you can analyze, you can get the statistics, you can get the uh, flow, what type of information, whether you want to have the HTTP, how many packets are there, how many requests have been sent. So request everything you can explore this Wireshark and then you can use it. Even Bluetooth or any how many Bluetooth devices are connected in the wire through wireless and what is the WLAN traffic here. So what is the SSID? SSID is an just identification how you are connecting to your wireless and all the informations will be available here so you can always capture it normally we call that some air capture wireless is an air capture you are not having any uh, cable to connect it's a air capture so you can connect it and then anything related to the tools some acl rules acl is nothing access control list so who can access who should not access just give a listing or give some rules that is called as acls access control list so you can also have some access control list what type of uh, information to be sent what type of information not to be sent so from this pc what sites i can access what sites i should not access all this can be updated in this from my pc itself in an organization like that there will be a specific device which is called as a firewall beyond the router or before the router okay the data will be filtered in the firewall itself and then it will be sent to the router it will be routed into the network so firewall is nothing but uh, we cannot touch it's just yeah it, it's a barrier to your network okay just a name is catchy like a firewall firewall you cannot touch that wall because it will be very hot so if you send if you if you put anything on that firewall it will be burnt okay as a normal thing so like that any data hitting the firewall will be deleted or will be denied access so to have a proper access inside the firewall firewall is also like your device a network device inside the firewall i am going to write some rules that rules are called as acls access control list who can access who should not get access what type of websites I can use, what type of websites I should not use. 
so like that acls can be listed inside the firewall and with that information information will be passed out or passed coming in okay i think amrit i think you can you i have given some basics about the firewall as per your request so means like if you want yes i can you can contact me at some time you can just go through google google is having lots of information just go through that firewall there is a software firewall that's a freeware also you can also just try to download it but make sure that you should not block your pc or block your operations go to free firewall uh, for testing you can download it you can check what to configure what not to configure and all these things you I, nowadays in the smart tvs you guys uh, have heard about the parental controls even in mobile parental control what is that think in a way it's a small firewall you are giving some rules what the how, how long the kid has to use my use the device because in a family if, if any parental control is there yes you your devices will be connected inside that family and if any kid is using a, a mobile or a ipad or whatever thing we will we can we can control it from one mobile i can give the timing how long he can use what websites are allowed what websites are not allowed how long he can use the youtube after the specific time the youtube will be uh, closed automatically and when which day he has to use means like uh, monday to friday if it is if he has to attend the online class only that application may be a google meet or zoom or only the specific online class application will be working no youtube no other uh, even the browser won't be working so that rules can be set in the parental control so very very good example is parental control is a fire think in that way so that you can easily understand i think amrit it's uh, clear to you okay i i think i am done with my information uh, sorry for not sharing the presentation because uh, um, we thought of sharing i have taken the uh, class through mobile but after that i got an idea i shared my laptop and i'm discussing with you through the uh, through my mobile okay i'm i'm done with that so any doubt anything in the basics it's purely very basic but if you are very strong in basics then you can be one of the expert in network networking is one of the very good domain where you will be getting very good opportunities and programming programming we know that so many programmers are there even in networking if you know networking and if you are a very good programmer you can design your own protocol you can have some copyrights so you will be one of the noted person not only in india globally so try to learn try to understand whatever you are learning it's not just like reading a book and right getting passed in an ins ti exams just learn deeply without asking what is what and why don't ever mug up anything what is this what's a protocol really i don't know i just say hey, i am studying about tcp what is tcp why tcp then you do the analysis you can get the answers okay uh, any questions can you post it i am i'm giving one minute for you guys so currently time is 338 so are uh, 2 minutes till 340 i'll be waiting for your questions if no questions we'll close it okay i am not getting any uh, chat information and then that you can uh, get the packets and try to search for colasoft c o l a s o f t colasoft so that there you can design your own packet you can get how to design the packet what type of information you have to use i think colasoft i'll be have check yes it's a packet builder 
you can build your own packet and you can inject into the network and you can send it so that's a template template follow soft so what is the packet number what is the packet length what is the time destination address you can see source address then and you can what is the fcs so extra data bytes everything is there so oh, packet number 1 out mm, so add array export all packets are selected packet so like that i can save the packet and then i can uh, use cola soft to insert this packet into the network yeah okay this is the packet correct yeah source address is this so i can design my own packet and i can change the source address destination address everything and what are the information i need i can do so this is a packet builder you can always do this and you can al also get this information so if you are interested in hacking you just try to use it. it's a, it's a freeware and very simple things where you can easily understand okay so thank you guys thank you friends uh, thank you suresh sir thank you for this thank you thank you sir that was one great wonderful session in the actually for the people who are uh, is planning to make this uh, network as their professional and this session might be great helpful for them uh, now we have come to the end of the session uh, my first and foremost thanks to our, uh, our chairman shri p shriram for strong well support now i would like to thank our principal and all the faculty members of cit it's an immense pleasure to thank our speaker today mr ramanajan sounder rajan for this wonderful session thank you sir now i would like to thank my co-host dr k suresh faculty assistant professor cit thank you sir finally i would like to thank all the participants and for this great support have a great weekend thank you thank you thank you sir bye